In 2008, Graham and Kelly were connected on the voluntary register. At that time, I was a counsellor working for the Infertility Treatment Authority. I'm still here eight years later, and now we're VARTA, the Victorian Assisted Reproductive Treatment Authority. So uh, I helped uh, Kelly and Graham connect, and they've been in contact ever since. Well, I just recently had a baby and I was probably a little bit still hormonal and I thought, well, what does that mean for me? Who am I? Who's my baby? It took me a while to come across the voluntary register. I did a bit of looking around on the internet and found a couple of donor, a donor conception support group and they spoke to me and then put me in contact with the how to get on the register. I did that and then initially there was no match. So I sort of was disappointed but thought, oh well, that's the end of that then. <laughs> and then four years later, I received a letter completely out of the blue and I was just not expecting it and, yeah, I was told that there was a match. I donated back in uh, 1978 uh, and at the time I was uh, already married but we, we hadn't got any children. Um, and uh, didn't actually intend starting a family at that stage, but I was back at university full time and, and lost a salary because I wasn't working. So I was looking around for opportunities to get some additional revenue and uh, I saw this advert for, for donors to, uh, to come forward. So I, uh, I spoke to my wife about it and uh, she said, well, you know, it, it, at that stage it was anonymous, which was um, something that we were conscious of. And so I went and, uh, along and donated at the Prince uh, Henry Hospital for a period of time. For 30 years I never gave it a thought, but in 2007 I was travelling overseas to um, meet my wife actually, uh, and I bought a newspaper at uh, Brisbane Airport and in 27 hours of flying you, you read all of it. And uh, I read an advert in there from ITA as it was then, uh, asking for people who had been donors uh, at the period of time that I was to get in contact with them to go on to a register. When I found out that there was a match, that was um, a, quite a shock, A, because I, when I was doing the donations, I asked this on several occasions, well, what do you do with the sperm? Uh, but I know that's a naive question to ask, but uh, the things like IVF, I wasn't very familiar with in those days, so I wasn't quite sure. And, I was given the answer that they used it for experiments, which I thought that was probably okay. So I'd never really considered that there would be actually a, a, a child that would come out of it. So when I got the uh, letter back saying that there, there was, a, was a match, that was really quite a, uh, quite a shock and uh, you know, a bit of uh, excitement and a bit of um, sort of, uh, not trepidation, but uh, sort of concern about, well, where do we go now? The process of connecting with Graham past the initial information being sent out that there was a match was a counselling session with the ITA and then letters were exchanged through them where I wrote and then my letters were forwarded on and vice versa. So my wife and I had been together for you know, nearly over 30 years, no children in, at all and never really missing children. Uh, and then suddenly there was a, there was a child, and uh, that changed the dynamics of the relationship uh, slightly because I had a child, she didn't. I think most people tend to be a little curious about what one of their children would look like. But if you neither of you got children, you can you can uh, you can just put that one aside. But when we found out, it was a case of well, you know, what do we do now? And I was always very conscious because of the original anonymity of the of the thing that we didn't want to. Um, jeopardise any relationship issues between myself and my wife. So she was a very important part of the decision making as to how we progressed and how we went forward. I was told that the way the, 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 um, the contact would be established would be that the, the, uh, the child would write me a letter. And when we got the letter, I have to say, both my wife and I, we, we scanned it uh, very in great detail because we, we were trying to pick up any signs of, uh, you know, any little, little hints and little sort of uh, suggestions that we could from, from what was written about what uh, 
the character of Kelly was like because we had, we had no knowledge there. So it was a very well uh, uh, composed letter. So we got a lot of uh, good feelings out of it because it was written in a very nice way. So we thought, well, uh, it sounds like she's a, she's a lovely person. Uh, and then I had to write back, which uh, I did, back to, to the ITA and they passed the letter on. And I think there was another letter. And then I think I sent a photograph uh, in one of my letters back to sort of say to what I looked like. When I got one of Graham's letter, the letter with the photo in it, I, he put the photo in a separate envelope that was sealed, so I didn't have to open it if I didn't want to. And I remember get, opening it and getting the letter out and then ripping the envelope open to get the photo out first because I just was so desperate to see what he looks like. So and then reading the letter and finding out that he'd said, I've put it in a separate envelope in case you don't want to see it. <laughs> uh, and all the time we were being counselled by I ITA and both myself and my wife about how the process was going and what was being done on the other side with, uh, with Kelly and, and on her side of things. And we felt in very safe hands, I have to say, we, uh, uh, all the way through the process we were we felt we were being considered, uh, especially my wife felt she was being considered and, and looked after and uh, anything that was um, I were worried to her was being well handled and, and explained. I, I felt very safe about where we were and, how, and where we were going. The questions I had about my donor were probably not so many as when I first found out. I had, you know, just little things, were there traits that we may have had the same or I have funny toes and I thought, I wonder if where that's come from. When I met Kelly, um, I, I couldn't see any physical resemblance. And, um, but then I was comforted by the fact that I couldn't see any physical resemblance with her mother either. So I thought, well, you know, presumably she is uh, definitely our child. But then she said, you never guess what? She said, I've got webbed feet. And I said, well, so have I. And that is a genetic uh, trait to our family, so I suppose, you're definitely the right girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as I, as I said, from my wife's point of view, she recognised the fact that um, there were potentially issues in, in, in my medical history from my, my family that, that, uh, that Kelly should be aware of and uh, at least know, because my mother died of, of breast cancer quite young and uh, so that's a, a, a feature that uh, would be of, of interest to somebody that uh, you know, carries my genes. <laughs> now been in contact for eight years. We exchange emails and birthday cards and Christmas cards. I know Graham's quite busy with his travelling, so we've caught up a few times over the years for, and all got together with my kids and my husband and my parents as well. I'd, I'd like to think that there's a little bit of um, uh, affection there. It was a, uh, not, not out, to out, outwardly uh, too overt, but uh, care about each other a little bit and uh, and so I keep contact with her and her family and uh, and her children and uh, Facebook's a fantastic thing you can uh, you can keep a pretty good track of people these days and we we contact each other two or three times a year and and uh, every so often if I'm down in Melbourne we've, we've caught up for breakfast or say hello to each other so it's a I think it's a very pleasant uh, position to have.